Hi guys, my name is Lawrence Baker. I'm an Adobe Certified Expert in Photoshop CC and Photoshop Lightroom. This video is about the graduated filter in Lightroom CC 2015 release. There's been an enhancement to the graduated filter in the CC version, whereby you are able to edit the overlay mask with a brush, adding or subtracting from the mask. Notice I said mask. This will allow you to add to the effect of the filter or subtract from the effect of the filter with a high degree of accuracy. Guys, I'm going to cover the graduated filter in its entirety. So this video will be about 15 minutes long. This image straight out of camera, if I press the backslash key, looked like this. And with a bit of developing just in the basic panel, I got it to this. It's crying out for a graduated filter. Now, if I press F8, I bring up my right hand side panel. And as I said, I've only edited this image here in the basic panel. And for most of my landscape shots, it will be mainly with just the basic panel and a graduated filter. To access the graduated filter, you can either go to tools, graduated filter. Notice the keyboard shortcut M for mother at the side. You can go to the rectangular icon here or press M on your keyboard, which I've done now. The graduated filter comes with some presets and I don't use them, but you can if you want to. I've, I've sometimes used Iris Enhance and Soften Skin and Teeth Whitening. They're the ones I mainly use on portraits. The rest, it doesn't matter if they're already set because what I would do is just double click on effect to zero everything out. Not every image is the same, so having presets seems to me a little bit of a time-wasting thing. You might as well just move the sliders yourself. But anyway, that's my personal preference. As the name implies, the graduated filter graduates its effect across the range of the overlay. Where you start dragging from will be the point where the filter is at its strongest. Uh, what do I mean by that? So. There's my little crosshair and I'm going to just do this sky so I'm going to drag down from here. Now if I hold down the shift key whilst I'm dragging it will constrain the overlay to a 90 degree or 45 degree angle i.e. it will keep it straight. You don't have to do this but I'm doing it on this occasion because the horizon is very straight. I often bring my overlays even on landscapes like this to two thirds into the image so I don't get an abrupt change. Overlay refers to the three lines of the filter. Top one, middle one and bottom one. That is the overlay. Don't get it confused with the adjustment mask overlay which is here. Which you saw briefly when, with the green on the screen. So that's the adjustment mask overlay. If you go to tools and tool overlay, you could auto show your graduated filter, which means if you watch the cursor and I go to the side here, it will disappear and then come back. Can be quite useful. Tools, tool overlay, always show. Again, it can be quite useful. Show selected. If you have more than one graduated filter, it would only show the selected one. Never show. I wouldn't quite know when you would need to use that, but it's there to be used. And the keyboard shortcut is H for hotel. To see the adjustment mask overlay, press the O key or go to tools adjustment mask overlay. So tools adjustment mask overlay. You've got red, green, white or black colors for the overlay. Show overlay and cycle overlay color. Keyboard shortcut is O for overlay. Try and remember it. Anyway, I'm going to press O now to get the overlay on. It's currently set to green. If I go to Tools Adjustment Mask Overlay, I can set it to red. I can hide the overlay by pressing O again. Or I can cycle through them by pressing the Shift key and O. Red, green, white, black. Back to red, back to green. So you have some options there. Just try remembering O for overlay, as I said. And by the way, you can also flip the overlay by pressing the apostrophe key. This is not shown in the menu. It's a keyboard shortcut only. And I will show you now. Just pressing that key will flip it over. You can also move the center pin, which will allow you to move the center point up or down. 
So it kind of compresses the effect or expands the effect of the overlay. So if I just start dragging the pin left, it sort of drags it down and that will drag it up, sort of compressing the effect. Uh, I prefer it in the middle. I've never used it anywhere else, but just for the sake of this exercise, I will probably leave it there. So it's compressed it a little bit more there. I'm gonna drag out with that hand. Oh, I made a mistake there, guys, sorry. Uh, don't forget, if you want to edit your graduated filter, it's just put your hand symbol on it and then click it. And that was the mistake I did there. Because if you go and do something now, you're creating another graduated filter. So I'm gonna delete that now and find my little gray button and hit it again. I will now press O to hide the adjustment overlay mask because I'm gonna develop this filter now. So you don't want the color green showing up when you're editing the filter. So I pressed O. I'll very quickly go through this because this is not about uh, how I edit an image. This is about the graduated filter. So very quickly, warm it up, take the exposure down a little bit, contrast up, highlights definitely down, shadows up, clarity up, saturation up a little bit, sharpness, that's obvious. I probably would put a little bit of sharpness on it, but not too much. Clouds don't have sharp edges. Noise is about luminance noise. So you can negate the effects of luminance noise, which appears in the shadows mainly. And if you shoot with a high ISO, you might need to use this slider. We don't have any today. Moi, en moi, en moi, my French is not very good. Um, it's color noise. And the best way to describe it is that's the pattern that shows, that's a moire pattern, or moi pattern. Television presenter was wearing a very patterned jacket. You often see that effect. So that's what moi or moire is. Anyway, back to Lightroom. Now I could also use defringe, and defringe is where you've got chromatic aberration, like a purple fringing often. It's not always purple. If this was a hard edge, you would see a, a often just see a purple fringe behind it especially on backlit objects. So yeah, it, you could get rid of it there. I don't often use it, but it's there to be used. Uh, I would often do that with lens corrections, but anyway. And the final one is color. There's no color effect now, but you can add a color to this overlay. So off we go. Uh, that's not very pleasant, but you know, I have used this. I'm gonna go with a light pink. The H refers to hue, which is part of the hue, saturation, luminance, color gamut, and it's expressed in degrees color. So there you are. I can also drag this slider, which means saturation up and down, make it very saturated or make it less saturated. So I might keep it about there. Right, let's see where we came from. We come from this to this, quite quickly with the graduated filter. If I hit the backslash key, we come from this completely out of camera to this very quickly. Right. In 2015, Lightroom introduced brushes to edit the overlay mask of the graduated filter and the radial filter. Now the brushes are here. You have two brushes, A and B. They're just like presets. You can set A to one uh, size, let's say, and B to another size. So it gives you a little bit of flexibility. There's the erase brush, which will erase the mask. A and B add to the mask. Size is pretty self-explanatory, but there is a keyboard shortcut as well, and that's the square bracket keys. The left-hand one will make the brush smaller. The right-hand one will make the brush larger. Let me show you. Uh, right-hand one going now, left-hand one going now. Uh, we'll save you a little bit of time. Feather is quite important. Now, between the outer ring and the inner ring, that is the feathering. You can't control the amount of feathering, you can control the size of the feathering. This is important, so if you drag the feathering right up, there you go. And I always use a brush with a bit of feather, it stops hard edges. Now flow is probably the most unintuitive thing to understand, and it's related to density. I'm gonna bring the density up to 100% here. With the uh, flow set to 50%, I would need two brush strokes to equal 100% of what's set in density. Now density refers to the transparency of the mask. So at 100% density, that's the mask at its strongest. So if I was to 
put it flow up to 100% now and drag around with the overlay on so you see the effect you can see I'm laying down 100% of the mask there's no graduation here I'm adding the same colors at the top of the mask to here so I'm really playing around with it if I press O now you'll see the effect I've done I'll get rid of it yeah you can see I've warmed that area up a bit I'm going to reset brushes to get to lose that change so there is a, a relationship between flow and density so if flow was set at 50% and density was set at 50% you will never exceed the 50% density so flow if you sort of put two strokes down at 50% let's say let me just use this for example and then put this down to 50% a density no matter what you do with flow it will never go above 50% density so I'm going to put the mask back on the adjustment mask overlay now if I go across here and do two strokes one two there's a bit of lag here guys I'm sorry about that you can see a bit of green there because I will not go above 50% density and this can be quite useful to remember because you don't want to end up with hard edges to your edits with this brush Arrays, well, you can hold down the Alt key with the A and B brush and you notice the middle of the circle is turned to a minus key now. I find that quite useful if I'm working quickly along with these square bracket keys for size. Or you can just go to Arrays. Now Arrays takes away from the mask. And even more so here, Feather and Flow will be important. And Density is, you're not able to change it, so try and remember that. I wouldn't work with my flow normally at 100% here. I'd have my feather probably higher. But anyway, just to show you the effect of it, by going like this, I've subtracted from the mask. So I'm taking away the effect in that area. If I press the O key to lose the adjustment mask overlay, you'll see I've ended up with something quite horrible. So try and remember to use that erase brush with the flow set quite low so you don't have this horrible effect like this. Auto mask, as, as it sounds, will try and keep to the edge of objects like this rock here. So if I bring it back to the A brush, let's say, have quite a small brush, left square bracket key to bring it down, turn the overlay on to see the effect. So it's quite important to work with the overlay on or the adjustment mask overlay on so you can see what you're doing. So if I go around this image now, keeping the brush half in and half out, it will do its best to constrain my edits to the edge of the of the boulder or rock. It can work really well and sometimes it can't. So it's a bit hit and miss. Uh, some people don't like it at all, but I don't mind it. And it's not done a bad job there, actually. If I press O now to get rid of the adjustment mask overlay, you see it's warmed that rock up quite well. This enhancement, guys, is really, really good. It needs to be used with care, but you can often negate using an adjustment brush and you're not working against each other so you can do a lot with these brushes now and I really really like it I think I've covered everything now if you reset the brushes now you completely use all the brush changes you've done this will reset the whole graduated filter or if I go with close now it'll set the filter and that would be the whole panel closed down I can put another graduated filter on here by pressing or hitting new and I often do put more than one graduated filter on an image, so don't rule that out. I can edit the actual graduated filter, or I can go to the brush again. I think I've covered everything here, guys, and I hope you've got something from it. That's it, guys. Thank you very much.